Now today we are going to find out uh, the minimum number of transfer units or the minimum number of trays that should be there in a distillation column using an analytical method. So we are going to use the analytical method to determine the minimum number of transfer units. So we know that this one will occur when we are experiencing the total reflux. Total reflux means the maximum reflux ratio and it is going to be infinite. How can it happen? So we say R equals L over D and when D becomes 0 R is going to be infinite. So at that point we are going to get the total reflux. So now we know that we have this the top operating line. So from that we are going to start a method to find out uh, analytical method to find out the number of minimum transfer units. But before that we have to get some idea about this one because this is the base so this is the foundation to get the minimum number of transfer units. So this is the normal equation. Here we numbered the trace in the column from 1 to n. So at the top we have the first tray and in the bottom we are going to have the nth tray. But we can also number the trays in this manner as well. Right? We can number one from the bottom and to the upwards up to the end. Whatever happens, we are going to describe the relationship between the liquid coming here and the vapor coming up. So whatever the numbering system we are going to get a relationship between uh, the vapor coming from the bottom tray and the liquid coming from the top tray. So if we are going to number the system in this manner from bottom to top then we are going to get this kind of relationship. So here instead of n plus 1 we are going to have n and x will be n plus 1 that is we are going to have trays like this so this is the nth tray and this is the n plus 1 tray because here it is the first tray so we are numbering upwards and as a result of that we are going to get this relationship so it, it is just a matter of numbering or matter of number of name in the trays so whatever when R is going to be infinite this relationship will turn into this so quite a simple relationship that is yn that is the y here and xn plus 1 that is here so we are going to have a relationship between these two so that is what it is explained here as I said, uh, a total reflux, the, the all two operating lines coincide with y equals x line and therefore the composition of vapor leaving any plate in the column is the same as the liquid leaving the above plate. So that is here now we said that we are going to discuss the relationship between two trays. So this is liquid coming down and this is vapor coming up. This is y and this is x. So here these are going to be equal. The concentration of the vapor coming upwards is going to be equal to the concentration of liquid coming downwards. Therefore we can write in this manner. So remember that we are for this point 
Normally we are going to number the system for the previous lessons. We numbered the uh, trays from from top to bottom, but here we are going to number from bottom to top. That is what we have to remember. So this is the basic relationship. So we are discussing about binary mixtures. The way are there are two there are only two components there are only two components and we can call them as a and b so this relationship is value for both a and b normally we are discussing about only the more volatile component but at this point we are going to talk about the both components so for a or the for the for the component a we can use this relationship and we can get y a that is the concentration of A in the vapor phase leaving the end plate is going to be equal to the concentration of the liquid phase leaving the tray above. In the same manner we can use the same relationship for the component B and then we can divide these two components by each other. As a result we are going to get this simple relationship and then after that now this XO and XB that is the most bottom tray the tray here so here we said that n is the one below n is the one below so we are talking about x so that means our relationship is y n equals x n plus 1 so x in the first tray that is here so the y should be here right y should be here so it is not one it is below one so for this composition or if this is the composition of the bottom so we can we are you going to use this as s now during the very first lecture in during the, pres uh, in the presentation we have a relationship in this manner There's no S here. Just YA over YB is going to be equal to alpha into XA over XB. Here alpha is the relative volatility. So this is for the first plate. The same relationship can be used for the second plate as well. That is here. So here we are going to have XA over XB in the second tray. So this is going to be equal to the if n plus 1 equals 2 then n is going to be 1 so using this kind of relationship we can use this one as alpha 1 into xa of xb 1 now we have got a relationship for xa of xb in the first trade that is this so instead of this one we are going to substitute this part here as a result we are going to alpha s that is this alpha s into alpha 1 into xa over xbs so we can continue this one up to the nth tray the tray at the top so this if this is going to be n instead of 2 if this is going to be n then this one is going to be n minus 1 right if this is going to be n then this one should be n minus 1 so when it is 2 it is alpha s and alpha 1 if it is 2 then it is 1 here so if it is n then it should be n minus 1 if it is 2 here then it is 1 if it is n then it should be n minus 1 so we are going to get alpha s into alpha 1 into alpha and so on and up to 
alpha n minus 1 and finally we are going to get x a o x b s so now there are many alphas alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 so there are many alphas and it is difficult to get an idea so instead of alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 we are going to define alpha average so alpha average is going to be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus up to alpha n minus uh, 1 but here actually we have alpha s right alpha s into alpha n minus 1 and we are going to get divided by n so this is alpha average so there are here there are n number of terms 1 2 if it is 1 then there are two terms so if it is n minus 1 there are n number of terms as a result instead of alpha s alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 we can just write alpha average into the power n and x of x b s so now if the total condensation that is at the top we are getting the vapor and after cooling if you are going to convert this vapor totally into liquid then here this is y a n by right? this is the nth tray and this is going to be x a so o x d so this is going to be equal so instead of x a i can write y a instead of x b i can write why be at total condensation not partial it, it should be remembered that this is total condensation so instead of alpha a into l or x a or x b at the distillate we can write this one as y a or y b n right so this one will equals to x a or x b n into alpha average that is the this relationship this relationship So now we have got a relationship for this part. So instead of x a of x b n, we can just substitute this part. And finally, we are going to get x a of x b at the distillate is equal to alpha average into the power n plus 1 x a of x b at the bottom. So we know that the concentration of the top, we know that concentration of the bottom can be found out. So just now it is just a matter of find out n plus 1. So by getting log means we can get this term. <coughs> right? So we can get this term and from here we can find out the minimum number of theoretical players in the column. Thank you.